care about. It's an every time of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing wacker or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 8 Six, six. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Richard writes in. He says, hey, Tom, just wanted to send in a thank you for two things and an explanation. I never thought it was a big deal that I had, quote, only $2,500 in credit card debt. Well, I've been listening to you for the last seven or eight months, and I've heard you call so many people idiots for having more or even less credit card debt than I had. It made me realize I had to pay it all off and be a man. And today is the day. I just paid off the remainder of my credit card balance and will never give another dime in interest to Visa again. Thanks for making me feel like an idiot. It really helped. Also, says Richard, I used to be so nice, respectful, helpful, charming, sweet, etc. to women. And I never got any chicks. I'm a pretty decent looking guy. And I'd see tons of lesser looking dudes get tons of chicks. And I attributed to them being more confident around women as I had sometimes a little shy. After trying to deny your teachings for months and continuing to get walked all over by girls, I decided to give it a try. I obviously don't have to tell you that you were right. You already know it. Now chicks don't leave me alone. Anyways, I'm a satisfied customer. I've got no debt, no bitch to buy things for. Not that I would buy things for them again anyways. Anyways... I've got chicks buying me drinks, and I've got my money to save and spend for myself. Damn, it feels good. Signed, Richard. All I can say is, Richard, I am proud. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week. Anything you think we should have talked about, you can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game, long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the telephone. All you do is call us here at one 800 800 8 Six six. This is Allah. Is that Allah or Allah? Allah. Allah. Yes. Hi Tom. How are you? That's an unusual name. Yeah, it's it's usual for Russian people. Oh. Okay. Have you read the Quran? No, I, I'm not Allah. There's no H at the end. <laughs> I can't tell by looking. Okay. What can I, I do I for a, you? I had a question. Um, like Elliot Spitzer's wife, would you blame her? If she just decided to take everything he owned, I know you hate like guys having to pay vagina money and everything. But if your husband does something like that, would you think it's okay for her to take everything he's worth? Well, here's the thing: she might feel justified to do it, but I have to be a dispassionate observer. And a dispassionate observer says that in the absence of a prenuptial agreement, what is fair is what is in the law. I don't think the law is fair. By the way, uh, adultery is no longer grounds for divorce in most places. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it doesn't justify that she get more or less money under the current law. And, and usually the way you see this is it's guys who find their wife on the living room floor effing their best friend. <laughs> And then the woman gets up after she gets caught and says, I'm going to take you for everything you've got. And then she does. Well, say that they didn't have a prenuptial agreement. Well, I mean, again, um, she will do whatever is legal under the laws of New York State, assuming she gets a divorce. And we don't even know that that's a sure thing. 
Well, say not her. Say someone else in this situation. Because I think it's like disgusting when a man does something like that. Why is it disgusting I, when a man does something like that, but when women do it, uh, we don't get anything? Any, anyone in general. I think I, I don't think prostitution should be illegal. I completely agree with you. If you want to go and do that, you should go and do that. But if you're married, there's no reason for you to be married if you still want to be with prostitution. I, well, I agree with that. Okay. Uh, but you have to understand, the, the, the idea of no-fault divorce came from feminists. Right. All right. I mean, women protested for no-fault divorce back in the 60s and 70s. Mm -hmm. That is why adultery is no longer a reason. And the reason they protested for that is because they wanted to reserve the right of women to have a lover. And then if they got caught, not to be left out in the cold without being able to feed their children. So that's how you got the laws you got. Yeah. Okay? But this is the other side of it. Now, when a man cheats on you, you're not entitled to an extra penny. But when a woman cheats on a man, he doesn't get anything either. And not only that, in most cases, a woman can cheat on a man and still get paid. Yeah. I mean, there's there's problems with the way the, the system works. But, I mean, morally, do you think that it's okay for her to do that? Morally. Well, I believe that people operate, that people will take what they can take under the law. It's not her fault that that's what the law is. Right. I think the law is wrong. I don't think there should be any alimony ever. I don't think there should be community property. I think people should keep what they earn and then negotiate what they're going to do to make up any discrepancies uh, in a prenuptial agreement that would be mandated for everybody. Right. I don't want, I really have a problem with the fact, you know, we've got overcrowded jails, we've got a court system where it takes months or years sometimes to get to trial. Yeah. And we waste judges' time deciding who gets the toaster and who gets the blender. Definitely, I agree with you. And this whole idea that the courts get involved in this thing is ludicrous. Two adults should be able to come up with a contract that states what people would get in the event that a relationship doesn't work out. Right. Well, thank you so much, Tom. I love your show, and can you take me out with a screaming orgasm? I certainly can. Oh, oh, God. Oh, yes, yes, yes. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Rick on the Tom Like Show. Hello. Yeah, Tom, what's going on, Dad? Still a radio show, son. Hey, I want to say, you know, there's nothing disgusting about what the governor did. You know, but there is one thing that is disgusting is spending that much money on that girl. You know, because what you teach, Tom, is not to spend money on these women. Right? Well, I teach men not to give women any money if they can avoid it. Exactly. So why is this governor spending so much money on this woman? Because he, he was hoping to get discretion. He should have took her to Mickey D's went through the drive-thru, and then stood in the parking lot, and, I mean, nothing more than a 100 bucks, Tom. Well, part of the problem when you're the governor of the state of New York, and pre prior to that, apparently he was, uh, according to the New York Post, uh, people are saying that he may have been with uh, hookers going back several years, so he was the attorney general of the state of New York. You always learn, run the risk that anyone you're going to have sex with is going to go to the newspapers, and then you're not going to be the attorney general anymore, or the governor anymore. Exactly. That's you why know, guys pay top dollar for discretion. Yeah, well, you see how how dis discreet it was, right, Tom? I mean, well, wait a minute. The, the the wait a minute. Uh, the uh, escort service was very discreet. Uh, the escort service did not know that there were going to be wiretaps on their phone. Oh, I see. And the wiretaps weren't on the phone until they started investigating Elliot Spitzer. Hmm. Uh, the reason Elliot Spitzer was was nabbed and the reason they were investigating him was because he made some weird financial transactions. And they thought he was being b b blackmailed or he was bribing somebody or accepting bribes. And so they started investigating his money transactions. Yeah, well, Tom, what? you keep up the good work. I'm on my way home from work. Can you take me out taser style? Taser style? I can indeed. Right. What did I do? Me every time. 
1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Robert on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Robert? Oh, hey, Tom. You busy um, over there? Sorry to interrupt. Uh, no, I've just been waiting for Friday to roll along, uh, to come along because I wanted to hear you talk about um, something I've been thinking about recently, and it's these women that have hyphenated names. Wouldn't want to uh, have a relationship with one. I mean, I just it bothers me that they can use one one that's convenient for them for one situation and another for another situation. And I'm thinking specifically about uh, Hillary Rodham Clinton, who now that she's in this presidential or Democratic race. Well, her name is not hyphenated. Uh, she's oh. done what people in my mother's era used to do. Uh, she has taken her maiden name and she has replaced her middle name with her maiden name. Uh, so they are not hyphenated. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, it just, I mean, now that she's uh, in this race, um, she's Hillary Clinton. Clinton, Clinton, Clinton. You don't hear Rodham anymore. And uh, I thought you'd have a lot to say about women that choose to have these alter egos and it would be nice. Well, I, usually it's some ball-busting bitch. Uh, yeah. I mean, have you, how many um, low-key women have you seen with a hyphenated last name? Right, Exactly. They have something to gain by it, and that's why they do it, I suppose. Well, I mean, let's face it. A name is uh, is a brand. Mm -hmm. uh, your name is what you use to do business with the rest of the world. So whether it's hyphenated or not, or whether it has uh, uh, three names or not, or whether it's four names uh, because you come from Spain or a Latin American country or whatever, uh, your name is your brand, and it is used to do business with the rest of the world. That's right. That is why I don't understand the people who have unpronounceable names or very long names. And frankly, I don't understand the purpose of a hyphenated name. It's stupid. Pick a name and live with it. Yeah, seriously. And then, then make you know, build yourself up on it and uh, make a name for a name for yourself, right? Well, that's, that's what I think. Name. That's my opinion. Yeah. I certainly uh, don't want anything to do with women with hyphenated last names. All right. Me neither, Tom. All right, yeah, Robert. Well, I just wanted to hear you talk about that, so blow me up. Here you go, baby. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. I've been with my girlfriend for three years. I have never once been to a chick flick with her. I have never once told her purse in public, okay? I have my ball. It's the Tom Likas Show. 97.13 FM, SoCal's FM Talk Station. It's the Tom Likas Show. Wide open telephones at 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Ashley on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? I'm doing great. Good. Hey, I just wanted to comment. Um, I missed the first part of the, the show where you were talking about women with hyphenated names, but I just caught the last caller and his comment and your reference to ball busting bitches yes <laughs> to quote you. yes well, i have a hyphenated name and i know you know why 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 do you well, need that well let me explain um my son has my maiden name and i'm recently married three years so i took my husband's name but hyphenated the two because i didn't want to lose that affiliation and that connection with my son. And so my son didn't take my husband's name, my new husband's name, I should say. Because your husband didn't adopt him. Correct, yes, because my son's biological father is still very much in the picture and involved. So that I just wanted to throw out there that sometimes people have different reasons for hyphenating their names, and it doesn't necessarily mean they're ball-busting bitches, because I'm not one. Now, what are people supposed to talk to you? If your last name is Jones hyphen Smith, are you Smith? Are you Jones? Are you Jones Smith? What are you? Yeah. I, and I and the harder it is, to, the harder it is to know what to call you, the less likely it is that some people will do business with you. I understand that, but I I choose in my work environment and out anything having to do with my husband and I, I go by my new married name. But anything having to do with my son through school, et cetera, uh, doctors, I go by my maiden name. So I, it's pretty easy, and I try not to confuse people by having two names. So what would you do I, now? I what would you do now if you had a child? Uh, they would have my husband's name. So you would have siblings with different last names, and that would be okay with you? Well, it's not, you know, my preference, but given the situation and my current situation and what I've chosen to do, yeah. 
I would have to be okay with that. All right. So and, anyway. And is there any reason that, that your son doesn't have his father's name? Uh, that's a long story in itself. And uh, we've moved past that, we being my son's father and I. And uh, it was probably the best choice, though, that my son had my last name. That's what we agreed to. What a mess. Yeah. But anyway, Tom, I just want to say I love you and throw out my, uh, my comment. Can you take me out Spitzer style? Elliot Spitzer style. Here you go. Number nine. The remorse I feel will always be with me. From those to whom much is given, much is expected. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas Show. Let's say hello to Nolan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, I just wanted to bring a, a little little note up to you, Tom. Uh, my wife, actually, she was brought up to me today. She said that I should call Tom Likas or email him on an article that she happened to have read in Cosmo. And it's called uh, Six Ways to Train Your Boyfriend. And it's written by a female dog trainer. So I, I she, uh, to... we actually talked about that on the air. Uh, we okay. we read the article on the air. Uh, she would not come on the program though. Oh man, that's we tried to have ridiculous. her on. Yes. So yeah, I just wanted to say I think that's the reason why there's so many ball bu busting bitches out there. So with magazines like this and it's so widely read, it's just it's, it's no you know it's no doubt that they'd turn out to be like that. So yes, right, Tom, I just want to be taken out with a bong coke, my friend. Here you go, Nolan. <coughs> one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Victor on the Tom Liger show. Hello. What's up, Tom? Not much, Victor. Look, all my question is: in the middle of the night, I'll be sleeping, and I'm married. I've been married for three years. And all of a sudden, I'll wake up in the morning when I'm about to go and take a shower, and I have hickeys all over my face. And I cannot feel them when she's doing them. Or Why does she do this? I ask her, and she says it's for her pleasure. But I think For her I pleasure. Have... By the way, you're how old? I am 23 years old. And you have a wife? Yes, I know, Tom, I know. Why? Because you knocked her up, right? No, no, I have. she has a stepkid. Ugh, strike two. Yes. So you I had to get married because she had a step kit. No, no, she treat me nice, and I don't know. She's just one of those kinky girls, and I always ask my, I ask her, is it because you know you're jealous? And she says no, but I get to work, and everybody makes fun of me because I have hickeys on my on my cheeks. Well, why don't you tell her to stop? I tell her to stop, and maybe like two weeks later, she'll do it again. Well, you're too young to be married. And, uh, how old is she? She is 24. Immature. Also too young to be married and having babies and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you need to be able to go to your place of business. And uh, it's important that you look presentable. I understand. If she expects you to pay the costs of her little bastard child, uh, the least she can do is allow you to go to work in a presentable form. Yeah. I, you know, I love the kid, but... It's just I don't understand why. How are you supposed? How are you supposed to seriously? How are you supposed to um, uh, to go to work if if, if you're going to look like that? Yeah, but it's just I tell her to stop and she just won't stop. That's well, we had a big fight, but it's just she says it's for her pleasure. Well, you have to tell her that she'll have to do it on the weekend or something like that. But it's, it cannot happen during the week, or else. But you well, won't do or else. How can I not feel it in the, in the middle of the night? No, no, look, I'm not a doctor. Call a doctor to ask that question, okay? Yeah. And the question is, why is it that the woman you decided to marry is doing something that is manifestly irresponsible? It is bad for business. It is bad for you making a living. It's bad. Yeah. Why? Uh, so what would be my the, the, the best thing to tell her? That it stops or you're out. Yeah. Because you have to work. Yeah, I understand that. Immature people do not understand the connection between your need to go to work in a presentable form and yeah. the money to support that baby. Yeah, he's not even a baby no more. He's like three years old, already, like four years old. Then, then to support her child. Yeah. 
Yeah. Does she understand the connection? If you don't look presentable, they'll fire you. And then you won't be able to pay the expenses of her kid. Yeah, that's true. Well, thank you, Tom. I you have to make that. that clear to her. Can you take me out with an African style, please? I can. Thanks. Here you go. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Jessica on the Tom Likas show. Hi, Tom. Hi. Hi. I was just calling you because um, I li I've listened to you since I was 18. This is my third time calling. Mm -hmm. and I'm a huge fan. And um, I have a problem because I hear how you tell guys to get rid of pingy bitches. So I have that situation. Um, I've been with my so-called boyfriend almost two years. and I called why, why do you call him your so-called boyfriend? Because he knows I'm out seeing other guys or I'm out on a date and he's still around. He still comes to my job with gifts and trying to ask for forgiveness. And I'm like, you know what? It's okay. You know, I take the gifts, of course. It's not my fault he gives them to me. <laughs> hey, but I, we have like the complete opposite relationship. He's the person in the relationship. He's the one who wants the attention, the pinginess. The, I told him I'm not that person, but I can't get rid of him. I did the whole bills thing where I could have, I moved out of our, my own apartment and I cut up all the bills and he finally did leave. So when I moved back in, he started sending gifts to my house. And like right now I'm calling you off of a brand new iPhone that he just bought for me two days ago. And I'm like, Hey, if you want to spend it on me, I'm not with you. So it's like, I don't know. I don't know how to get rid of him. Hey, I, I'm sorry. Excuse me. I don't have sex with him anymore. I, I'm never around. We haven't gone out in six months. We haven't had any physical contact in, I'll say, four months. And it's like, there's nothing there. And I still get these flowers to my job, these expensive gifts. gifts. I got a coach purse on Monday, an iPhone yesterday. So I'm like, hey. How do I get rid of him? I love the gifts. Don't get me wrong. I'm a girl, but I like it. I can't get rid of him. Well, uh, you, I mean, if you, but see, women call in and say this all the time, and then when I tell them how to fix it, they, they really don't want to fix it, and you really don't want to fix it. Tom, I got him out of my house. I got him out of our apartment. I mean, I turned off all the bills that were in my name, which he couldn't turn back on because I just placed them on hold while I was supposedly on vacation. And he finally did leave with no power, no, no cable, no anything in that house. And he left. So I got him out. So I come back to my apartment. I'm moving my stuff back in and gifts start to come. And I tell him, I'm like, I don't want these things anymore. You know, I gave back a lot of the things. I gave back the new car because that was way too much. And I gave back all this other crap. And I'm just like, my God, what do I do? It's like, I did. I I, I, do you want point. the answer? Yes, I do want Call that. the police. Get a restraining order. Get a restraining order. Yeah. Okay, but I mean... If, if you're serious that, about it, you will do that. Okay, I understand that. Um, I just but now you're going to tell me you don't want to get him in trouble, and you know... And no, please, that's the least. I have police reports on him, where he showed up at my house two, three in the morning, and they do citizen's arrest over the phone and crap like that, and we're going to court in two weeks. So, I mean, I, I, that's what I ultimately... You arrested had. him or he arrested you? No, I had a citizen. I have a citizen's arrest on him. I called the police on him because it was like 2, 3 in the morning and he's outside my apartment complex yelling and shouting and making scenes. Put your mouth on the air. I'm sorry. Or it's like just a, an arrest where eventually you get a court date and you both have to go to court. So now we both have to go to court and that's ultimately what I do plan is like there's no way around a restraining order then. Uh, darling, I, I'm not a lawyer. And I, frankly, I think you should talk to an attorney if you're going to court. Do you have an attorney? Oh, yeah. Uh, have you asked these questions of your attorney? Um, we have an appointment. Um, I scheduled the appointment. Well, right, the questions you want to ask me, write them down and ask your attorney. Okay. okay but Tom. a restraining order is the way to go. Perfect. Thank you. I mean, I just wanted to say that I love your show so much. I, like I say, I've been listening to it since I was 18, and I love you. Can you just take me out Lindsay Lohan style? I... Do we have Lindsay Lohan style? We do. Okay, here you go.
<laughs> 1-800-5800-TOM. We hadn't played that one for a while, for God's sake. Tom, Tom. Like it, like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Do you have kids? By design, I do not. You don't? By design. By design? Yes. That's the thing. By dictionary. Stupid bitch. It's the Tom Likes Show. 97.1 Free FM. SoCal's FM Talk Station. After I got laid off, we lived off our credit cards. Now I have a job, but my payments are breaking me. If your credit card debt is breaking you, you need more than credit counseling or a rate reduction. You need to wipe out the debt itself without filing for bankruptcy. Financial Freedom of America negotiated with my creditors and cut my debt by 47%. With one free call to Financial Freedom of America, you could be on your way to eliminating 30 to 60% of your credit card debt. Now I have room in my budget to pay off my bills and enjoy life again. If credit card debt is controlling your life, don't give up. Call Financial Freedom of America. They have a proven program that could eliminate up to thousands of dollars of your credit card debt. Call for a free, no-obligation consultation. Results may vary. Not available in all states. Call 800-918-1146. That's 800-918-1146. Call now. 800-918-1146. That's 800-918-1146. It's going to be a giant weekend of hot rods, customs, classics, trick trucks, wild street machines, and specialty cars. The Guys Orange County Car Show presented by Eagle One March 10th and 11th at the fairgrounds in Costa Mesa. Get up close to thousands of hot rods and cool rides. Plus an automotive swap meet, cars for sale corral, vendors exhibit, special vehicle parking areas, kids fun zone. Plus you can see the cars from the hit TV show Overhaul. And hey, don't forget Sunday is family fun day where kids 12 and under are free. The Good Guys Orange County Car Show featuring all years makes and models of American Cars and Trucks. Presented by Eagle One, March 10th and 11th at the Fairgrounds in Costa Mesa. It's not just a car show. It's an experience. Don't miss the Good Guys Orange County Car Show at the OC Fair and Exposition Center. Buy your tickets online at good-guys.com. You've heard me talk about how much I love my Range Rover, right? It's absolutely my favorite SUV. I just love driving the thing. And one of the reasons I love my Range Rover so much is Land Rover Encino. These guys are absolutely great. They're the number one Range Rover and Range Rover sport retailer in the whole country. And Land Rover Encino has the nation's largest selection of Range Rovers and Range Rover sports in all of Southern California. And because of their huge inventory, they're making it even more affordable than ever before to put you into one of the very coolest SUVs on the planet. Range Rovers are more affordable than you might think. Now, if you're considering some other brand of SUV, go to Land Rover Encino first because you're going to get a great deal. Take it from me. If you're ready to get a great SUV and a great deal, go where I go. Land Rover Encino. Call 866-GO-ROVER. That's 866-G-O-R-O-V-E-R. You're going to find them at 15800 Ventura Boulevard, right near the 405 and the 101 in Encino. Call them to find out more. 866-GO-ROVER. That's 866-GO-ROVER. It's Land Rover Encino. Tom Like is show at one 800 800 tom Let us know where telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Wide open telephones here. one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. Greg on the Tom Like is show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Greg. How you doing, buddy? Doing okay, Greg. A couple of weeks ago, you did a topic on wedding rings and cubic zirconia versus diamonds, and we had all these crazy bitches calling in saying how, oh, a man's got to pay all this money for a ring to show her how much he loves her and this, that, and the other. And I just found myself just getting infuriated. when I, I think that just means they don't love us, because what do they buy us when we get married? That's my point, and that wasn't ever brought up in the hour that you did it. And I, I tried to call in, but then I got cut off, and I couldn't get back online. Because I was married twice. I made the mistake twice myself. And both times, I bought their wedding ring, but then I turned around and spent money on my own wedding ring. You know, and I paid for the the, the, the honeymoons and things like that. What do women do 
to show how much they love their man. Have sex with him? I don't think so. Yes, they give you a gift. They they will they will uh, lower themselves to have sex with you. Yeah, it's unbelievable, and, and it's just the mindset. You know, just, it just blew me away. I found myself getting angry and angrier when these women are calling in, screaming, saying, "Oh no, he's got to do this. He's got no. What do you do for me? Nothing." You know, and it just it just it blew my mind, and I don't think that that point was really brought up. You know, and I, I just wanted to say, you know, I bought my own wedding rings both times, and nine times out of ten, you see a guy's wedding ring, it's a plain gold band. There's no diamonds all over the place. And he, I guarantee you, he paid for it. But I just, I just wanted to make that point because it just, it really ticked me off when I was hearing it and hearing these bitches call in. You know, I just kind of wanted to make my point. Can you take me out, um, shut up, Tom style or Tom like his shut up style? I certainly can. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Scott on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, hello. What's up, Tom? Not much. What's up, man? First time, long time. I uh, pretty much just wanted to thank you for uh, a couple years ago. I was kind of getting out of a bad relationship, you know, and I think a lot of people get when they're young. If they don't get married when they're young, by the time they're 25 and have a couple of kids, like, that... You know, life is not going to be as significant for them, or they're or they're living lower than their expectations. But you know, thank you for you having you out there and your service that you provide. It shows a lot of guys like us that it's just all about taking care of your finances, taking care of your body, and just you know living your life and not worrying about having you know to live up to these bitches' expectations. So I just wanted to call and say thank you very much, and you're doing a great service. Well, thank you for that, Scott. I appreciate the call. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom Carlos of the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yo, Miles. What's going on, bro? Not much. Your ratings are huge. Huge, baby. Huge. I love it. Love it. Here's the deal. Here's a testament to you. Everything you said. You gotta watch this commercial of a trade school. I don't know the number, the name of it, but you see this sap on a park walking around with the kids. And the wife is huge. And this is actually, they say this is an actual ex-student uh, of ours. And I'm like, oh, my God, if anything, I would never go to a trade school if I got to get that kind of wife, bro. It's just crazy. Oh, my God. Yeah, I mean, really, they, you just kill me. I'm serious. You, you, you're just so right about the whole thing of going to school and, and work hard. These guys, that they start smoking pot at 19, 18, and then they think they can go and do their whole uh, life by just doing a trade job. It just, uh, I don't know, man. It just, I, I just saw this thing and I said, you know what? Tom, there you go. Tom is right. This is the kind of wife you're going to get if you go to a trade school. Well, thank you so much for making note of that, Carlos. I appreciate the call. I really do. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. For those of you who have missed it, this was the second race at Santa Anita yesterday. Up to the gate. Goes in. And away they go. DTV broke well from the outside gate along the inside Harlem. Now they're all lining up on the lead, though. A wink at the girls in the pink colors. Now there goes Per for me to kick on. They weren't too keen to get an early leader, but Per for me now going on to do that. And Hus the King is at the back. Four lengths would cover the lot. They run to the 5 8 pole, and it's Per for me down at the rail. And DTB, the two favorites stride for stride as they move down the back stretch just behind that. Wink at the girls racing in behind them comes Harlem, who's now six off those leaders. And Hus the King, the early trailer. Past a half mile they go, and purr for me, comfortably in front by a length, DTB, quite content to just sit there in the second spot. Then it's two lengths back to wink at the girls, now coming after them from third. Harlem is still giving them seven length start and three more to Huss the King. They come past the 516s and Purr for me continues to lead them. DTB though being confidently ridden and DTB now cutting into that lead. A wink at the girls in the pink colors. Also Harlem running on in the black and even Hus the King running on. Suddenly it's wide open. Homeward bound now and it's DTB who goes on to get the lead. Wink at the girls tackles immediately. Hunk the kick coming home gamely down the inside and Harlem at the rail. Coming for home now and it's DTB up alongside. Wink at the girls. Girls, DTB in front as they run to the wire. DTB's one of the neck. Wink at the girls second. Harlem a close third. How many of you had DTB in the second race at Santa Anita yesterday? Eh?
One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, it's Kurt on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Doing great, Kurt. Yeah, uh, you know, I was hearing about you guys talking about engagement rings uh, today, and um, and there was a story on the internet that just came out a few hours ago, I guess, and uh, some guy bought a twelve thousand dollar ring for his girlfriend and in London and he put it in a helium balloon and he walked outside of the ring shop and a gust of wind picked it up and took it away and he yes. watched this twelve thousand dollar ring fly away and Yes. Was, and and yeah, by no, the way was, by the way, uh <laughs> after that happened, he he got in his car for two hours driving around looking to see if he could find it. Like, what are you gonna do? It's it's like it's in a helium balloon. It's flying away. That's so now right. this guy is telling the Sun newspaper in London, he's saying, Wow, I hope somebody finds it. Right, I'm sure they'll keep it too. You know. <laughs> Sucker! Yeah, so, and, he, and he was saying that he, you know, he thinks he's going to lose his girlfriend now. I said, well, what kind of girl was that anyway? So, you know, <laughs> what you're talking about. So I just wanted to call and share that with you. Uh, true story. I have it right here in front of me, and I thank you for that. It's 1 800 5800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Here's Dave. Dave is listening to the online stream in San Francisco on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, your show is awesome, and you're, the few guys that are listening to you, God, I hope it helps them. Hey, I wanted to uh, comment on that guy who said he had a 10 from Los Angeles. Yes. Yeah, here's the deal, Tom. Actually, I, I, he was I, from Los Angeles, and his girl lives near you. Oh, up this way? His girl lives in San Francisco, yes. Well, here's the deal, Tom. If somebody offers you a Jaguar for $1,000, what do you know for sure? Well, I agree with you. That's why I told him he has to have a prenuptial agreement. Well, not only that, there's something wrong. There is something wrong. It does, it does, well, there's it also does, something wrong when you're having a relationship with someone who lives 450 miles away. Tom, I was in that situation. I had a gorgeous girl, incredibly beautiful. And I wasn't making a lot of money. We dated long distance. And I went through all the hoops and did everything you said that was wrong. Eventually, I even married her, and it was the worst. I swear to God, she was psycho. And and I warn any guy out there, if it's too good to be true, it usually is. I mean, yeah, this guy wrong. was 20 years older than the 10. He only makes $40,000 a year, and she lives 450 miles away. Guys, use common sense. If it doesn't fit, it doesn't. There's something wrong. There's something. You're you're about to set yourself up for total disaster. I just wanted to say that. Well, I think if he does what I recommended, which is number one, to tell her to move in with him, and to try to stall it off as long as possible. And then yeah. uh, if she still insists, tell her, yeah, fine, but with an ironclad prenuptial agreement, if she agrees to that. Well. Even, even with that, I swear to God, she's going to send them through something. I, I, God, it was the worst time of my life. Uh, uh. It was totally beautiful. Everybody was like, holy crap. Here's the thing about it. After after we eventually got divorced, everybody, then they told me what a psycho bitch they thought she was. Yeah. Oh, of course. Well, I, I you know, I've been there myself. I know how that works. Hey, buddy. I appreciate the work you're doing. God bless it. Hey, take me out uh, with, uh, let me see, what you got there, African style. All right. I'm going to take you out Bernie Ward style. But all right, Dave, here you go. Baninge, 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 so penza. Baninge, 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 so penza. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here's Wendy on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi there. How are you? Hi there. <laughs> I've never heard your show until today, and I guess I'm a little perplexed because I've never heard so many guys talk that way about women, like that they're all bitches. And I'm just wondering where they're finding all the bitches at because um, there's a lot of nice women out there. I mean, maybe we don't all look like Angelina Jolie. But that's the problem. You see, guys want to be with hot chicks who right. are bitches. Right. Because, I mean, I just heard the cubic sarconia diamond thing. I'm the type of girl, I don't even wear jewelry. I, You know, I don't even need a wedding ring. I mean, we're not all like that. And I just wanted to, you know, give a shout out and let you know that, you know, there's there's good, decent women out there, you know. Yes, but I, usually they are uh, fugly. Fact. No, I'm not ugly, and I, I, I you know, or I swear or to God. past their expiration date. 
Well, I may be 41, but I don't look it. <laughs> yeah, but darling, again, you... <laughs> what? That, you see, women become a lot nicer uh, when they realize they can't be spoiled little princesses anymore. Yeah. Guys just aren't going to buy never, it. Trust me, I was never a spoiled princess. I've always been heartbroken. So you were never like a 9 or a 10, even when you were younger? No, I was I was probably like an in between an eight and a ten. I've always been, you know, cute. Everyone's always told me eight and a ten is not cute. Uh, between eight and ten is hot. Seven is cute. Okay, I was hot. I was hot when I was in you my twenties. I was hot. So you were supermodel material. I was also focused on like you know just trying to make sure I had a career because my parents got divorced and it was as bad as it could get. And I saw my mom just scrape by, and I just wanted to make sure that I could take care of myself. You know, because well, the game plan for most home. hot chicks these days is to find a starter husband uh, who's got money, stay with him just long enough so that you can take half of everything he's got, and then get the hell out. I, I, I've never. I, I, I'm from Ohio. I don't think that way. I just don't get that mentality, and I and I see it out here. I mean, that's definitely how a lot of these women are. Darling, but, many um, of the women who are here in Southern California there are came from other women places that aren't like that. They just. They're not from L.A., I guess, or Armenia. Darling, many of the women who live in L.A. are from other places. Right, they're from Armenia, and you know, and they're just they're 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 really whacked out of their mind, and they're not um, they're not wholesome. They're not real. I mean, what do you mean not real? Okay, I'm talking about superficiality, uh, wanting the wanting the material things. That's what I mean by not. Yeah, real. but you know, again, a lot of times when a woman is just really hot and kind of stupid. Women say, oh, they're not real. Sure, they're real. They're just stupid. Yeah, but I'm talking about, like, the ones that, like, go overboard where you could tell that they have, like, all this plastic surgery done or, you know, that kind of stuff. And guys don't mind that. If you look like you were in Playboy magazine, most guys are going to sign right up for that. Our email address, tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.